Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, it's me, Uncle Ranks, Papa Ranks, Lobster Pappy, I'm here, I'm here, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I feel good, I feel, I feel powerful, I feel jacked, I feel like um, the steroids are starting to kick in, uh, the EPO, uh, the HGH, uh, the IRS, uh, the... Um, uh, the 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 CNN. It's, I've 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 been mainlining it all. I've got a, a drip just 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 off camera, just full of it all, full of uh, BBC, um, big black cock that is, and full of hemorrhoid cream, uh, full of just ah, uh, uh, you the sort of um like the remnants that you get at the bottom of the toilet brush holder, that's all in there. It's all good stuff. People don't realise. It's all good stuff. I mean, I've ta been taking tips from that, that lad who drinks his own morning wine. <laughs> he doesn't look happy about it. Hey, listen, guys, I'm here, though. I'm here. Another day. Another um, another day at the coalface. Just chipping away at it, baby boys and baby girls. Just chipping away. I've got a browser full of ungodly bollocks. I got a sack full of shoe throwers. Oh, there are some bits in there. <laughs> there are some bits in there. Uh, I got a new uh, new thing that I've uh, found out that's quite cool. I put that there and I go. Lobsters. Lobsters. So that's good, isn't it? Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome again, once again, to Coffee and Mames. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. Yeah, get on the Twitch. Uh, there's there's no one there, so you can have all the space that you want. You can really stretch your legs out. You can lie on the floor. You can drink in there. You can smoke. You can smoke tabs inside. It's fine. You can just rack up gear on any available surface. Literally, the rules don't apply over at Twitch. Uh, it's not like the sort of um, the fascist authoritarianism of YouTube and Facebook. Uh, it's just it's uh, it's just thoughts basically. It's just incels and thoughts. Oh, it's a beautiful time to be alive. Hey, listen, guys. Seriously though, got some good bits in the news today. Got some more listener mail, so that's a bit of fun. Jesus, would you look at the lineup of shoe throwers for today? Oh, bloody synergy remix of Pythias. Yes. Uh, what Chrissy Chris? Uh, now sicker. Aries, Metric, Teddy Killers, Black Sun Empire. Lobsters. Jesus. Uh, and the classic bit of old Mr. Frankie, uh, which is Tinder just it came up, you know. Just came up and I was like, oh, God, that's a good bit, wasn't it? Base Symptom. Remember that, 2017. Mm, choice. Uh, listen, guys, in terms of news, what have we got? An STD-ridden ladybird species is back, threatening to invade the UK all over again. Brexit, oh, come soon enough. We've got STD-ridden ladybirds threatening to invade the UK. Build the wall. There's no way I'm having that. Look, these STD-ridden ladybirds, they're not sending their best. They're not. They are, you know, they're, they're flooding in over the border. <laughs> and I, for one, won't stand for it. Um, I know this is threatening to invade the UK, as if, like, these STD-ridden ladybirds have actually, like, issued a threat, like a written threat, like uh, one of those, um, uh, like, Al-Qaeda videos where they're in a cave and they're like, we will rain death onto the West. Oh, are these ladybirds, so they're, I don't know where they are, they're camped out at somewhere in France or something, and, uh, <coughs> pardon me, they're camped out in France, 
And they've got a little video, one of the other STD ridden ladybirds. He's got some really old, like, digi, digi cassette camera. He's like, oh, come on, zoom, zoom in a little bit. And then, like, the head STD ridden ladybird. He's like, we will rain this new super gonorrhea down onto the infidel. Just you watch. Your landscapes will be awash with STD ridden ladybirds all listening to jump up drum and bass. You will not believe the harrowing terror of it all. I presume. Uh, teen drug dealer caught because he looks like Shaggy of Scooby Doo. Yeah, he does. A little bit, yeah. I assume that they had some sort of, um, what do they call it, a, a, a Scooby Doing, where uh, they, they caught him, took his mask off. <laughs> Let's see who he really is. Ah, it's just some little scrote. It's called Callum. Oh, well. Um, Aussie farmer claims vegan protesters told him lettuce has a heartbeat. <laughs> it does. It does, vegans. You're eating things that are alive. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> lettuce has feelings. Didn't you know? It has hopes, fears, dreams. Uh, it has intimate relationships with other lettuces. They... Um, they paint. They go to life drawing classes. Uh, they skip and dance through the fields, and you just chuck into them without a second's thought for the feelings and the pain that these lettuces suffer when you tear them apart with your teeth, vegans. It's a disgrace. Um, Percy, the angry peacock, runs amok after escaping from farm. Peacock on the lamb. He looks like trouble. I will say, I'm not a fan of peacocks, especially. Uh, I think they are. They have an undeserved sense of entitlement. I think they're show-offs, and I think I, I, I think they're a disgrace. Um, Angry peacock has been running into people's back gardens after it escaped from uh, a local farm. Uh, kill it and eat it. That's what I say. Um, and right, good sex robot news, but from from yesteryear. Um, Cheers to old clog, clog lobber in the Discord for putting me onto this because it's kind of had a bit of a resurgence. It's, there's a lot to get into with it. A, a say sex robot is the most utilitarian sex robot you could ever imagine. It looks like Hal. This is a disaster. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that. Oh, no. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Uh, furious customer pins down barber and shaves his head. Oh, great! This is this is all good stuff. Uh, I'm impressed. Right, look, let's get into some of these um, high heel hurlers, though. Look, I, no, I'm going to start with it because it's sort of been on my mind now. Mr. Frankie, base symptom from 2017, just to just to fucking you know get a little bit of heat into the hair I think we need it. <laughs> Get in the comments on Facebook if you're there. Tell me who you are, where you are. Tell me what you have for breakfast. Tell me what you're wearing. Ooh. Come on, describe your outfit to me. You are you have uh, you have my permission to lie. Morning, Mr. Pals in the chat. Oh, big dog Thaddeus is in the uh, in the Twitch. He's just racking up gear. We got fish on uh, Facebook's listening nude in a birthday suit. So it's born up nude as well. God, guess me every time. 
Uh, Willie Mosedale saying burgundy t-shirt, jeans, and great distress. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Chris is wearing uh, peacock. He's wearing my. I'm wearing my peacock show off outfit. Lovely. Chris Barrows on Facebook is wearing nothing but high heels. Uh, Pritt is wearing just socks as the shoes have come off in order to be thrown for Mr. Frankie. Uh, that's understandable. Janik is in Switzerland just wearing Prospect merch. Matt Hitch, Hitchmoff. Throwing his slippers out the window. Oh, Matt, sorry, I forgot to wish you happy birthday yesterday. So happy birthday for yesterday. Uh, the Space Symptom by Mr. Frankie. It's on Blackout. Jesus Christ, what a record. Taking 0% prisoners on that one. Uh, Squidgy Beats is wearing the disappointment of his family. So that's nice, isn't it? Nice thing to wear on a Wednesday. Uh, right, look, let's get into this uh, STD-ridden ladybird species that's threatening to invade the UK all over again. <laughs> Jasper Hamill racking up 14 chairs on this bitch. Um, your home could be at risk of invasion by a grubby species of ladybird known to carry a sexually transmitted disease. The spotted beasties. Well, that's very dehumanising language she used against ladybirds there, Jasper Hamill. Uh, are called harlequin ladybirds and have black wings rather than red ones. Okay, so I can see some underlying racism in this. Um, they carry la, la boule bedial's fungal disease, a parasite that is often transmitted during hot insect romps. Good God. We, we most recently heard of these horrible, horrible monsters last year. Hamill really has it in for a lot of, a lot of basically non-human species. Uh, he particularly has it in for sharks. He hates sharks. And uh, yeah, now ladybirds are getting the chop. Most recently heard of these horrible monsters last year when they invaded houses and flats across the nation. There's some little factoids here about harlequin ladybirds. The actual name for harlequin ladybirds is Harmonia... Ax, uh, Axiridus lair. Okay, good. Uh, in the US, the Harlequin ladybird is called the Halloween ladybug. Uh, the bugs have over 100 different recorded colour patterns, which makes them difficult to identify. They're wearing camo, basically. Uh, they're larger than the regular two-spot ladybird we're used to seeing in Britain. Uh, they hibernate in large numbers in buildings during the winter, so experts are advising you to keep windows shut. Uh, they have a lifespan of between two and three years. Well, how about that? That is significantly longer than the lifespan of the average dubstep record. Uh, now, the creepy crawlies have been spotted in Liverpool, uh, where they're reportedly swarming in large numbers. Oh, mm, dear. Uh, in one block of flats, there are so many of the creatures that they are falling off ceilings into people's dinner. Like... Now, are, are people not noticing that they're that their ceilings are completely covered in STD-ridden ladybirds. They're just in there chomping away on whatever people in Liverpool eat, Frey Bantos pies or something, I guess. And uh, then they're just dropping into the pies. What's going on up there? Oh, no, it's an STD-ridden la ladybirds falling into my Frey Bentos. Oh, no. In one block of flats, uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, and if Liverpool has fallen to the sex-crazed ladybirds, then the rest of the UK is surely doomed to follow. Uh, they won't do any harm to humans. Oh, thank God. Uh, but the arrival of thousands of the insects can affect some animals if eaten. 
and indigenous plant species due to the fungus they carry. So it's best to keep them out of your ass if you can. Send them all home. Um, Steve McGrail, <laughs> director of pest control company, Pro Kill Environment. Wow. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's a hell of a name for a pest control company. Uh, what should we call it? Like um, uh, 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 SM Control, like Steve McGrail Control. No, how about Pro Kill Environment? That's not where we want to live in. That's the sort of environment we want to live in. Something a bit more Pro Kill. Um, he said in 2016, they are non-indigenous species. Uh, they are coming in large numbers. Pfft, I do see some very... Mm, a lot of sort of underlying far right rhetoric in this uh, in this article here, Hamel. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually joking. Uh, they usually cluster around window frames, and they cluster together uh, to gather heat and hibernate in winter months. According to scientists, the harlequin ladybirds pose a risk to our normal species because of the fungus the creatures carry, uh, which is passed on through mating. Um, right, I think. Probably that's that's it. I don't think we need to uh, go into how to get them out of your house. I imagine just sort of bit of that. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Oi, sling your hook. Go on. Clear off. Bloody well clear off. I imagine that would be a reasonable way to get them out of your house. Uh, right, come on. Let's. Uh, what else have we got? Teen drug dealer. Caught uh, because he looks like Scooby-Doo. No, he looks like Shaggy of Scooby-Doo. A teenage drug dealer was identified by a member of the public because of how similarly he looked to Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Callum Foran, 19, and his friend Jordan Johnson, also 19, were sent down for four years, ten months, and three years, four months, respectively, for selling skag and crack cocaine in Devon. Hey, listen, man, it's uh, tough to make a living out there on the mean streets of Devon. You know, kids have to turn to uh, apple scrumping. Or, um, I don't know, hand jobs or something. Uh, over the past year, both the teenagers have been in court multiple times for different, different offences. It's not a lot to do in Devon. Uh, in August, Foran avoided prison for the second time in the space of months after pleading guilty to possession with intent to supply of heroin, GBH. I think you find that's GHB. Oh, or is it or just a, a, a separate offence of GBH? Having a combat knife in public and possessing cannabis... Okay, so this is the second time in the space of months. It's pretty good. Like, se selling heroin, GBH, having a knife in public. I'm not bothered about the possession of cannabis. I, and you don't get to, you don't go to prison for that? Right, okay. Um, he, he had been caught with eight wraps of heroin, worth about 10 quid each, in Runcorn last, last January. Look at the knife. Jesus Christ. Um, three males observed acting suspiciously down a footpath by plainclothes officers. When searched, we found these knives. Uh, we found these. Knives won't be tolerated on the streets. Uh, we let him off with a caution. Um, a police constable on patrol spotted the passing, uh, the pair passing something around and hid before stepping out and opening his coat to reveal his police uniform. <laughs> like a sort of... Like a flasher, but a police flasher. <laughs> Even more terrifying than a naked man is a police uniform underneath. Uh, when he called them to stop them, they ran away. But then he threatened to use his taser on them. Keep running. Police questioned them. During an interview, Foran said that he had been in debt and was asked to deliver drugs to clear it. Uh, it's a likely story. He insisted the charges had... Uh, he insisted the substances had been found... Uh, with with Werther with Werther leftovers had been found with Werther leftovers, but was already on bail for charges of GBH. Okay, so you're on bail for GBH. You get caught with a knife and a load of skag that you're selling. No, no prison. Uh, foreign had been identified. Uh, foreign had been identified as being involved in the incident after a witness said he. Uh, Oh no! Are they are they are sending him? Oh no! It was just the GBH that he got away with. The police and the skag have got him into the nick. Okay, well that's good. I, I correct myself. Foreign had been identified as being involved in the incident after a witness said that he uh, said she had a good look at him, saying that she would compare him to Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable comparison. He was sentenced to a total of two years in a young offenders institute. Spent suspended for two years with a twenty day rehabilitation order. 200 hours unpaid work and the £50 seized to pay off the GBH victim in compensation. 
uh, adding that no more could be awarded because of uh, his lack of assets. In response to ongoing knife crime surge across the country, police have given greater st- have been given greater stop and search powers, meaning they no longer have to have reasonable suspicion. Well, they can come search me any day. I welcome it. Uh, right, okay, let's have another little bit. What have we got? A uh, new metric here. It's quite nice. It's, um, it's definitely a little bit more relaxed than uh, bloody Basin and Christ. Get into the li- uh, listener mail after this. Morning, the the fell the fell roots, the feel roots. Uh, shout out to Poad for the impressive size of his neck. Top work. Tazzy asking whether or not the Facebook stream's gone down. Looks fine, my end. Rosco on YouTube saying love my t-shirt available now at Bowl Cut Garms wink wink we'll talk about thick necks today in the chat lick Luke Smith going yes G neck nomination mm. I like a thick neck I also like a uh, hey I tell you who I like I like the weird the weird kid on YouTube the very long neck he's called damn long neck and uh, I like his friend who's he sadly is in prison at the moment uh, but he has a very very wide neck and he's called damn wide neck and uh, they just get into scrapes. They get up to mischief. 
and uh, you know that sort of thing. Uh, it's basically it's just Florida. Uh, I do recommend you checking them out. Anyway, look, guys, listen to mail. I think I need to make a. Uh, <laughs> um, I need to make a jingle for it, really, because it's uh, it's definitely it's a regular feature. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email me will at threshold dot fm, um, or send me a direct message on Facebook. You know, whatever. Uh, people asking what the dynamic diameter of my neck is. I can I, I, I don't know. If I have a measuring tape anywhere. I mean, I guess. Hmm. Look, this is this is something that probably we'll get into off air. Anyway, look. <laughs> All next matter. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so listen to mail. Um, you can send it in on Facebook DM or Instagram DM or Discord or will at threshold.fm. I'll read it out. Any thoughts you have on anything that's being covered on the show or just stuff you want me to read out on air. Anyway, uh, this is on the subject of urban myths that we've been discussing recently. Um, this is from Abe. He says, hi, Will. Today, you read out a letter about urban myths that merged two separate urban myths into one. And I know that because both stories stem from real-world events that did, and he uses capital letters for did, did happen to my friend Mark Williams, he claims. Hmm. Right, I'm going to give this uh, this a healthy dose dose of scepticism. The penguin was stolen from... Okay, so the penguin theft from a zoo was one uh, of the stories. Pe- the penguin was stole from Drusilla- Drusilla's Park near New Haven. Oh, I've been to Drusilla's. I don't think I've ever seen penguins there. Um, and I used to go there a lot as a child uh, and was discovered in the bus on the way back, therefore satisfying a latter sceptical comment on YouTube. Uh, in the bag... Oh, yeah, the, the penguin was found in the bag of a child on the bus on the way home. The child did not have Down syndrome, right? Okay. Um, the child that did uh, have Downs was the one who Mark, this is his friend, he's claiming, Mark locked in a cupboard under the stairs as he believed him to be an elf uh, while tripping on acid uh, in his flat in Hove, actually. Uh, I I don't believe any of it. I think uh, your friend Mark is a liar and I think he is a dangerous friend. I think you should break up with him as a friend. (laughs) Uh, Just wanted to clear that up. Um, Okay, well, thanks for that. Uh, he says, I do not know how much of the incredible level of detail you laid out in your trans family versus Psytrans Mafia story yesterday is true. But what I do know is that dark progressive Psytrans might actually be, depending on the company and venue, actually superior to drum and bass. Um, well, maybe not superior, just different. Horses for silencers. Lots of love, Abe. Uh, this uh, is Abe who has been spreading propaganda in the VIP list about um, Dark Progressive Psytrance being superior to drum and bass. And because he's paid money to have that in there, I am obliged, uh, due to free speech laws, to state that in the VIP list every day, even though it makes my blood run cold every time I see it. Uh, but thanks for getting in touch, Abe. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't believe you. Well, maybe it's not you I don't believe. It's your friend Mark Williams, who is undoubtedly a notorious troublemaker and a menace to society, and he should be stopped. He should... Get your act together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next letter. Uh, This comes from Romaine Fraser. He says, Hi, Will. Loving the radio station, as always. Thanks, mate. Uh, You asked for us to send you some listener mail, so here it is. I had a pretty boring day. Uh, It's a new paragraph for every, uh, every sentence here, which is a bit of fun. I had a pretty boring day. Broke my leg at lunchtime trying to make a smoothie. Okay, Um, went to the store to buy a new leg. Uh, I asked the shopkeeper, do you have any spare legs? He said he didn't. I asked, do you have any smoothies? He said he didn't. I said, that's typical of communism. He called the cops. I'm in jail now. They have smoothies in jail. Not the kind I was looking for, to be honest. Thanks. Your base, your treble, Romaine Fraser. All right, that's quite esoteric. Um... I, I don't know whether or not that was written uh, while under the influence of narcotics or I, I don't know. I like it, though. I'm a fan of it. I think that's that's I just wonder whether or not this is some sort of something cryptic going on. There's some sort of deeper meaning to all of this that I should be that I should be getting. I've been thinking about it a lot since receiving it last night. <laughs> um Yeah, well, thanks for getting in touch, Romain. If anyone wants to shed any light onto this, um, please do let me know. Do you have any smoothies? He said, I didn't. I said, that's typical of communism. He called the cops. I'm in jail now. They have smoothies in jail. And not the kind I was looking for, to be honest. Uh, right, that's well, that's fairly terrifying. 
Okay, last one for today's listener mail. Hi, well, uh, this is from Stefan or Stephen. Um, Hi, well, cheers for the show. Makes my morning at work a lot less dull. This also confirms that at least some of your listeners are employed. <laughs> but, uh, okay, well, I can see, <laughs> I can see, let's see this becoming a thing, right? Now, I, obviously, uh, some of my listeners are employed. I presume some of them are unemployed. Um, let me know. Uh, in reference to the urban myths, I heard the baked bean story uh, from a few sources. Um, this is the story of the man accidentally getting a baked bean in his pub while trying to wash his knob before a one-night stand with a dishcloth. Also, another one-night stand one where a girl goes back to a guy's house, they are having sex, and when he comes, a, loads, a load of his mates burst out of the cupboard dressed in cricket gear, shouting, 100! Uh, the referee... Oh, the reference, sorry, being that it is the 100th woman he has slept with and he has got what is known in cricket as a century. I've heard this as well. Um, this seems to be the most believable of all the stories so far, but I would be pretty surprised if it turns out to be true. Keep up the good work. Stefan, P.S. Ronnie Size is hardly the height of maturity if he can't even hold onto a pair of cycling gloves without losing them. Perhaps he needs the old bit of a string... A uh, bit of string threaded through the sleeves technique to keep them safe. Well, that's top tip. I uh, hope uh, that's, you know, you don't want to lose a second pair of cycling gloves. That'd be a pain in the ass. Yeah, bit of, bit of string threaded through your jacket. Um, yeah, in reference to this urban myth about the cricket century, I have heard it. I feel like... Now, was Lad Bible, before it was Lad Bible, was it called Top Lad? Uh, dot com and it featured many of these sort of stories and you would sort of upvote them I guess in a little bit of a way uh, like you do on Reddit and people would say decide whether or not that person was a top lad or uh, you know something to that effect but did, did top I, was it top lad top lad website <laughs> uh, no I mean it's just I, I Anyone, help me out with that. Did it turn into Lad Bible? I don't know. I'm not getting a lot of love from uh, toplad.com. Uh, it's currently unavailable. Don't know what that means. Okay. Well, yeah, I definitely have heard that one before. I think it's probably unlikely. Uh, but it is certainly more believable than the penguin theft and what is essentially kidnapping a child while on drugs. I just feel like the ramifications of kidnapping... Uh, a disabled child while on drugs would I don't I think that's the sort of thing you'd be able to find in the news and after significant googling I, I couldn't find anything any corroborating evidence backing it up whatsoever um, but if anyone else has any more light they're prepared to shed on that subject listen to mail get it in will at threshold.fm or dm me on facebook or um discord uh, right, come on, let's have another little bit here. Well, let's, all right, let's do this Chrissy Chris bit. I think it's Chrissy Chris and the ooh, uh, and Teddy Killers. War on Silence is the title track of Chrissy Chris's new album, War on Silence. I think it's on War on Silence Records as well. Really doubling down on that name. <laughs> Get up, Chrissy. Misty watercoloured memories of making making comedy skits for Chrissy Chris's One Extra Show. Those were the days. Kick Nimba, who is in the Facebook comments. Uh, I need to download your video and chop it up in order to play clips of it. I'm going to do that on t uh, probably tomorrow's show. Uh, yes, Kick Nimba has done an extremely amusing video called Conflict Messiah Makes Any Movie Better. It's on YouTube. Thoroughly recommend watching it. I'm going to play some clips from it tomorrow.
coming up at 11 o'clock. We have a brand new show for you. Our gal, Power Jen, will be live and direct with our show Positive Energy. Playing some fiendishly good old school hardcore and things of a like kind. And reading out good news, I think. Rare treat. So that's at 11 on Threshold.fm. If you're listening on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you head on over to Threshold.fm at 11 o'clock. And hope that the technology gods are on our side. Chrissy Chris and Teddy Killer's War on Silence. Title track of Chrissy's new album, He's a Good Boy. When he's not cruising around in his fancy Porsche motor car, he's making some fucking bangers. So it turns out this Luke Smith character is this poad, poad they're talking about. He's claiming he's got the longest neck. Mm. How long? Measure it. I want, I want, I want measurements. Citation needed. Yeah, uh, yeah. War on Silence, Chrissy Chris. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. No one can take that away from him. Uh, Aussie farmer claims vegan protester told him lettuce has a heartbeat. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um, an angry Australian grazer, someone who rears cows, hit out against vegan protesters in a bizarre rant uh, during uh, which he claims one activist told him that uh, lettuce... Has a heartbeat. Here he is. He's about as Australian as they get. Um, he's <laughs> morning, everyone. Brendan Farrell here. Just an update on nothing really. Um, <laughs> nice one, Brendan. Vegans are going bananas. Yeah, mate. Blockades left, right, and centre. Flinders Street stations in chaos. Abattoirs as they've been chained up. Front gates. People locking themselves here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, Demanding mate. Demanding four, four lamb be released from the abattoirs and they'll get rid of their protests. Right. Why give them four lamb? Give them four bulls. Um, give them two-year-old bulls. But when you hand them to them, just hick, nick the nut bag of it and let it go bananas and watch a hundred protesters swinging off the train trying to get into the Honda Civic. <laughs> I just got off the phone. Now, I come up as a no ID thing on the phone, and I answer every single phone call because that's what I do. Right. And the Sheila said to me she didn't <laughs> like the last post i done on Facebook um, because lettuces have got a heartbeat. Lettuce has a heartbeat. I... Literally shit my pants in laughter, and I don't know what else I can say about that. Some people have just got no bloody idea. None. I'm out feeding my cows this morning. I can tell you what, there's a steer here that's going to be mm, 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 bloody delicious at Christmas time. I can't wait to hook into it. Um, that's just me. It's what we do. Next door neighbour's running lamb at the moment. Bet you he's licking his chops too at Christmas time. Mm, mm, mm. Fair dinkum. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> I just gobsmack with some of the bullshit that is coming out of these people's mouths on what they're trying to achieve. 
it's he is as Australian well, as it's possible to get, really, isn't he? Unless you have one Lettuce of those... Lettuce has a heartbeat. Uh, Thought for the day. Hooroo. <laughs> Hooroo. <laughs> all he needs is one of those Crocodile Dundee hats with the corks hanging off it and, it, and, a, and a can of Fosters. I know no one drinks Fosters, really, in Australia. But, you know, just in terms of being a, a, a parody of a nationality. Um... Uh, just sort of reiterates what he says. Um, it may come as no surprise the foul isn't too fussed about the vegans. In fact, he seems to delight in flying in the face of their beliefs. Um, there's a quote from the Prime Minister here, Scott Morrison. Um, uh, whilst this is a bit of fun, uh, the uh, the began protests, that would be the vegan protests, Tom Woods. Christ, the vegan protests are causing quite a stir out in Australia. 39 people were arrested in Melbourne the other day. The other day. Uh, nine, nine more were arrested by New South Wales police after they chained themselves to a conveyor belt in an abattoir. Uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison has described the protesters as green-collared criminals. Oh, that's an interesting one. And vowed to take strong action. Fucking die. Mm, strong action on these little grubs, mate. He told 2GB TV channel, this is just another form of activism that I think runs against the national interest, and the national interest is being able to farm their own land. Uh, I'm expecting state governments, uh, I'm expecting state governments, as I'm sure they will, do their, do their jobs. Right, okay, cool. Well, let us has a heartbeat. Okay, guys, remember that. Um, rollers are a genre. Uh, the earth is flat, and lettuce has a heartbeat. So just remember that, vegans, when you're tucking into a nice lettuce sandwich, uh, that uh, that lettuce almost certainly died in agony. Died in agony. And as you then chop it up more on the board, just, ah, oh, Jesus, just causing more pain and suffering to that poor, innocent lettuce. Um, right, look, we're going to get into these uh, shagging machines. Now... Uh, Jesus, look at the state of that. Chinese hospital introduced hands-free automatic sperm extractor for donors uh, that even play videos to help. Uh, automatic sperm extractors are being introduced to the hospital. Um, okay, so long and the short of this, guys, is it is apparently, uh, so someone was reporting on Twitter, uh, uh, a Chinese company says its automatic sperm extractor is helping clinics collect semen from donors reluctant to masturbate in a hospital setting. Look at it coming out like that. It's actually quite terrifying. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, so for anyone just listening, it basically looks like um, looks like it could be a sort of information point, like it's a sort of white plinth kind of looking thing with a screen on the top, but then it has effectively a flashlight built into it that is motorised and sort of comes out at you. And I guess you you put your put your lad into it, and it just does all the business for you to extract the sperm. Um, it's yeah, it, it, I, I think it has different speeds, and oh, it's quite terrifying. It's the most utilitarian sex robot I've ever seen. Jesus! Oh my god! That looks like one of those things you put your dog's paws in to clean the paws. Um, look, there's loads of them all lined up. They actually look like giant electric razors with a shagging bit in it. Anyway, so you can buy them on Alibaba, um, which is fine, I guess. How much are they? Should I get one for the studio? Uh, 5,000 US. It's not bad, is it? I mean, I guess that's dependent on how many you're going to get. I'm probably going to want a few of them, so maybe I'll get a bulk discount. Um, it's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, I... I guess I'm just worried that it might be a bit too low because if it's for the Japanese market, they're, uh, you know, on average, a lot shorter and I'm quite tall. I don't, I mean, I don't have to go on my knees for it. Maybe, uh, maybe if I knelt down on a box, that might be, be right. Anyway, it has a good description of it here. Uh, it's just, it's truly harrowing stuff. Um, apparatus introduction. It merges modern digital technology, automatic control technology, and simulation technologies with semen collection and premature ejaculation desensitization training function. This is the crucial part. I cannot stress this enough. The sperm collector bit is fine. 
cool. All right, a nice feature. But this premature ejaculation desensitization training is the real, like, real living in the future bit, okay? Uh, apparatus features the device can simulate the environment of a woman's vagina, which makes the patient feel comfortable in the process of collecting semen. Uh, it provides a full range of visual, auditory, and olfaction simulation. Olfa I don't know what that is. Um, exclusive semen collection sheath can eliminate contamination of semen. All-round isolation measures to prevent cross-infection. Uh, All-round airbags. Wow, what well, in case you get into a crash, presumably. Uh, make semen collection true experience. Not sure what that means. Good human machine interface and easy to operate. That is a very important on any sort of semen collection device or sex robot in general. A good human machine interface. Okay, so here, yeah, look, the ejaculation therapy functions. Uh, it can simulate a vaginal environment uh, and through massage, twitching, sucking, and vibration, as you know any good vagina will do, um, acts upon the human penis, uh, which can make semen collection be fast and safe. Uh, so you don't want to take, literally, you don't want to be taking matters into your own hands, you know, because it can be quite dangerous. Uh, so it is the best clinical collection equipment of semen. Uh, now this is the good bit here. Oh, well, there's a few bits here. Um, premature ejaculation desensitization training. The strong currents impact and rub the glands, penis, repeatedly in order to reduce the excitability of nerve endings so as to passivate the nerve of glands, penis, uh, sulcus, coronarus, and the surface of the penis, and regulate the sex nerve center in order to minimize uh, nerve sensitivity, improve ejaculatory threshold uh, to treat premature ejaculation. So, as anyone with uh, premature ejaculation, uh, uh, suffer any, any of the sufferers uh, will tell you that the best option is, if you're, say, going out on a date or something, or if it's date night with the missus, what you need to do is bash out a couple of furious ones before you go out. So, effectively, this is what it's doing. But, I mean... <sighs> Yeah, do, do, all right. And uh, the, la the last one is sex psychological evaluation. This sounds terrifying. Uh, sexual psychological evaluation. It's one word there. With the uh, International General Psychological Questionnaire to understand the real performance of sexuality activity so as to provide reference for effective treatment. Okay, so I guess this is like, um, I don't know, just get your technique up. Is it? I mean, like, I mean, it's, it's always nice to sort of level up, I guess. Like, I used to have one of those Apple Watches, and there's an app you can get for that called the iWank, uh, and it's really good, because what you do is you, you first, you, like, log, like, a test wank to, like, uh, so it can just sort of assess a baseline, and then, depending on what your goals are, like, whether or not you're going for, like, um, you're going for time, either like shortest possible time or longest possible time, or you're like, you're going for distance or, you know, just depending on what your goals are, you know, your self-defined goals, you log all of those in there and then it can give you tips, you know, on how to correct your technique and, and so on in order to, you know, quickly get you to achieve whatever your hairy handed goals are. I know that you obviously you would think that of the years and years and years of, of training that you'd already put in, you'd probably done your 10,000 Gladwellian hours, haven't you? You've sort of reached the level of mastery. But like any true master will tell you, they're always learning. You know, it's the point at which you stop learning is kind of the point at which you failed, you know, in a, in a, in a sort of way. So I guess this just all sort of feeds into that. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. They look, Jesus, look at, this, look at them all. Uh, there they are. It's um, the future is now, old man. Uh, look, they have them all. Um, yeah, they actually has clips of the Daily Mail here. I don't know whether or not it's, it's worth bothering with actually reading the article. Uh, speed, frequency, amplitude, and temperature are all also controllable. Uh, it has a small cr screen on the top which plays films for the user to help them with the extraction process. So maybe you want to watch coffee and memes at the same time. It's fine. <coughs> I'm I'm impressed. It's um yes, it's very utilitarian, but I you would expect that I guess from a communist country. Uh, this is from 2000, originally from 2012. Fucking hell, Jesus, the commies are ahead of the game. Jesus, this seems like this seems futuristic. This is 2012, man. The West is getting left behind. 
China. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm very impressed. Right, guys, let's have this uh, Synergy remix of Pythias. It's called Suspect. Uh, it's out now as part of an EP that is out soon. Remember 11 o'clock, our gal, Power Gem, stepping up to the plate for her first live show. It's gonna be a smasher. This guy's up and on about sheath throw of the week potential with this one. It's possible. Suspect by Pythias, remix by Synergy. Uh, it is on the Des- Descend Descend Remixes Part 1 EP out soon on Blackout Recordings. Lovely bit of gear, that. Very lovely, tasty bit of gear. Um, listen, guys, get into the VIP list now. Thank you to everyone. Well, thank you to everyone that's listened, listens to the show. You're all wonderful humans. Uh, remember, you can send me a list of mail if you have any comments on, the, for example, the sex machines, the semen ejacula- the semen extraction machines, uh, or anything else covered in the show. You can email in for listener mail, will at threshold.fm, and I'll read them out on air. Uh, thank you to everyone who is supporting uh, the station financially. Uh, without you, I would not be here. So if you want uh, to help keep the show and the station running every single day and help uh, sort me source new content, new people for the station, um, me create more stuff to make this show bigger and better and really to be able to just spend more time on this, I, I probably 
spend half of my time uh, working on Threshold, and then obviously I have to <laughs> do a living with the rest of my time. Um, but obviously, the more we can get, you know, through the Patreon and through merch sales, the more time I can spend making this amazing for as many people as possible. Um, and if you support for ten dollars a month or more, which is really what is the cost of two pints less, in fact, than Jesus. There's no way you're getting what's that seven and a half quid in pounds. There's no way what unless you're going to Weatherspoons, get two pints for seven and a half quid. Good luck. Um, anyone supporting for $10 a month or more gets their name read out at the end of every show. You will also get £5 a month to spend on Threshold, threshold merch. That all You can save that up over a number of months. I know D is saving up to try and buy an island with it uh, for us all to go on and live on. That would be nice. We can create the libertarian paradise of our dreams. And you also get you will also get your name in the fa- in the founders list on the new app, which is being developed as we speak. Uh, only if you're supporting this month and next month, but after that, the app will be out. And uh, so, yeah. And you will also get to, into the VIP lounge on Discord, uh, where I share lots of exclusive bits, give away some free samples, give away some free tunes that no one else gets. And yeah, you get to basically lord it up on Discord with your name being in green which is nice. So you can join the ranks of Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonklaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mossens, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, uh, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heischerbeck, John Finlinson, the BDR crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace, Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Rams MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elson, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Side Trans is actually superior to John Pace, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, Chris Breaks, The Build, Carissa Barthelson, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Genby, Flaxis, Alexander Cassidy, Matt Wright, Dylan Laws, Grant Sullivan, not that, Tom Robinson, subscribe on YouTube, Greg Cornford, Grace Sellers, and Dab Smasher. Thank you all so much. You also will get sent a uh, packet of stickers, one of these. Uh, there'll be some Shoe Throwers Are a Genre stickers and some Threshold Church of the Shoe Throwers stickers that will wing their way to you if you sign up. So just go to threshold.fm. Go to the donate page and it will give you all the information you could ever need. Or go to Patreon, search for Threshold. And or go to patreon.com slash threshold FM. Uh, coming up now is our gal. Our gal from the other side, uh, Power Jen. She will be live in literally a minute and a half. Uh, maybe even less than that. Uh, a minute and ten seconds. So, got a minute and ten seconds left. Just... Me, you guys, just out on our own, just doing our best. Um, look, thank you for everyone that listens. Uh, reminder, you can get this show as a podcast if you want on Spotify, on Apple's, Apple Podcasts, on Overcast, on Stitcher, on Podbean, um, or if you're really desperate for just the RSS food. I haven't, I, look, I've had a couple of people mention that they're razzed off because I haven't been uploading the shows to SoundCloud. Um, if you're really desperate for me to get them back on SoundCloud, I will. Um, but it's a faff, and sometimes SoundCloud won't let me upload stuff because it says I've uploaded too much. Apparently, it says it's unlimited. It's not. Uh, so that's bloody SoundCloud's problem. That sounds like a SoundCloud problem, not a coffee and memes problem. But if you are keen and desperate, I will get them back up on SoundCloud if, it's, if that's the most convenient way for you to listen. Uh, but otherwise, get them on YouTube, get them on Facebook, get them on Twitch. Get them on normal podcast. Just search for Coffee and Memes. Right, thank you for listening, everyone. Go to threshold.fm and get hyped for Power Gen with positive energy. All right, I love you all. Goodbye.